So the first study that we're doing, the one that's funded by the TSB right now, the Technology Strategy Board, is to assess the feasibility of undertaking MRI and computerized cognitive testing in the community. And I think it's very important because while in principle it would seem a no-brainer, if I can use that term, to do detailed high-resolution brain scanning, very complicated cognitive testing, because why not? The fact is that that can be quite hard to implement within an NHS service that isn't you know, an ivory tower, lots of time, which has to deal with lots of people coming through, uh, all different backgrounds, all, all different settings. We need to know that it works, because it may be that, that, that one cannot easily apply that. So what seems to work fine within a clinical trial or some research setting at University College London, actually when you take it to Hastings in a, in a community clinic, people don't want to. It may be that they just can't get the test done in time or they don't like the test. Maybe they don't tolerate the MRI scanning. Maybe the results don't feed through to the clinicians in a way that they can understand what, what they mean. Maybe we need to... So there are all these issues about whether or not it can even be done. I think it's terribly important to test that. And it's absolutely, to me, right and proper that the first stage should be feasibility. So the principle is one that's, that almost speaks for itself. Doing more detailed investigation of brain structure and function in people with a memory problem. I think that's unarguable. The practice, can we actually do it outside of the ivory tower, very specialised, well-funded, lots of time settings, has to be shown to work. Now if, say, the feasibility study works, if, say, we are able to work with GPs who don't refer for MRI scan, they don't have any experience in this, they, that's what they leave their hospital colleagues to do, if we can implement a process and they're very happy to refer on to the study, their patients have an MRI scan, the reports go back to them, they ultimately are happy with the result, you know, they don't get bamboozled by some sort of 10-page scientific abstract that means nothing to them. That's the litmus test. If at the end of all this we have the numbers and when we ask the patients themselves, was that okay? Was there anything that they didn't like? You know, was there something in the process that wasn't good? We then ask the GPs, what was that fine? Did something come out of this that helped your diagnosis? Now, if at the end of the feasibility study the answer is on both counts, it's fine, it helped. It means that we can, we can then go to the government, to NHS England, and say these tests that have been used for 20 plus years in research, we can use in routine practice because actually, ultimately, an iPad-based computerized test or an MRI scanner is not, you know, hen's teeth. They are potentially widely available, just that no one's bridged that gap. So obviously our hope and our the I say, expectation is that they will be feasible, these tests, and that this can be implemented. And that will be a complete sea change in the way we do business in the health service. Because what we're saying, to again, just to recap what I said earlier, what that then brings in one stroke is university research tertiary level diagnostics to primary care, who historically have never ever had access to this sort of technology and expertise. Yet they're the ones who see everyone, and they're the ones who deal with 90% of people as they get older. So it's crazy that they don't have access to it. Except it isn't crazy because it's a, it's a quirk of the system and this will override that quirk, so we hope.